To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Not everybody may know that my father had a little apartment. My parents spent much time at it. It was right over the firehouse on Main Street in Disneyland. Disneyland was being built while Dad was in the middle of a production on Lady and the Tramp. He'd spend the morning in the studio, then out in Anaheim in the afternoons and back. It's a long drive. I think he always envisioned he'd have to be there, and he'd want to be there. Mother and Dad loved the Victorian period. It was the period that they grew up in, but our home was not of that style. This was their little Victorian masterpiece. Emil Curry, very talented set decorator, decorated the apartment with things that they had and things that he also found. He won an Academy Award for the sets of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Mary Poppins, Pollyanna, all the films, that part of my father's life and beyond. When dad would travel, they'd go into little antique shops and that's where he acquired some of his miniature collection and bric-a-brac, you know, little china teacups and things. Mother collected cranberry glass and the cranberry is the color that dominates this apartment. It was this little microcosm of the Victorian world in cranberry red. It was gorgeous. Dad was always fascinated with things that worked. Mechanical toys, music boxes, that sort of thing. Near the front door, as you walked in, you'd see this beautiful Edison phonograph with a beautiful green morning glory shaped horn. Actually, it had morning glories painted around it and it had a little wax cylinders. So we had music up there, nostalgic music. On the other side of the apartment is this beautiful music box made by the Regina Music Box Company in the late 19th century. It had this large metal disc with little notches in it that played all kinds of tunes. It was really quite wonderful to watch, sort of a calliope-like tone. Those were his personal purchases. What surprised me when we went back into the apartment sometime after Dad's death was that everything in that little tiny kitchenette area was there. In the cupboards were little baby bottles from the time my children were infants. Dad loved grilled cheese sandwiches, and so there was a sandwich grill there. And also, he was very content with a meal of just a can of chili, Gebhardt's and Hormel, which he would mix. Not very fancy. Emile Curry designed a little terrace out on the roof. Wicker furniture, beautiful colors, and they would arrange little buffet lunches for family there, and then we'd sit out on the ledge above the firehouse and watch the parade. A few days before Disneyland opened, my parents celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary in the park. Everybody went into the Golden Horseshoe Saloon, and just as we were sitting down to dinner, Mother came to me and said, where's Walt? I can't find him. I look up and I spy Dad. He's up in a balcony just over the stage, and the Golden Horseshoe Review has started. And at the end, the Pecos Bill thing, yippee yay yay yippee yay yo Dad is up in the balcony, and he starts going bang, bang. <laughs> And he started to climb over the side of the balcony, get down on the he, and then when he got to the stage, he just stood there and beamed. And someone yelled, get Lily up there. So mother goes up on the stage. Then everybody came up on stage and started dancing. And dad was just wandering around, so happy. It was very sweet. Because the apartment was above the firehouse, it had a pole to slide down from the sleeping quarters to the engines. The pole went right up through the apartment floor to the ceiling, and Dad's looking out the window, and he saw Bess Parker and Buddy Ebsen starting up Main Street, and he called out to them and told them how to get up to the apartment, and Dad showed them the fire pole and suggested that they slide down it. And like good sports, they both did. When Mother and Dad would spend their weekends there, 
Dad had this little routine. He'd get dressed and walk the park before anybody else was there. They were still sweeping the streets and watering it down, and he'd have breakfast at Aunt Jemima's pancake house. It was his neighborhood. My dad would call me from his office sometimes and ask if they could take the kids down to Disneyland for the weekend. My children often spent the weekend down there. They really loved it. And he loved being a grandfather. The couches are beds, and underneath them were pull-out trundle beds. And they all slept there, little girls all over the floor, and mother and dad. Ron and I spent a couple of nights out there with our children. And just out on the other side of it was the jungle ride. And they didn't turn off the soundtrack for the jungle ride. So all night, you would hear the gunshot, you know, that was all part of the soundtrack. The kids kind of enjoyed it, but I, I, we didn't. <laughs> From the time Disneyland existed, the annual opening of the Christmas parade was really the highlight of our Christmases. Dad would always lead the parade in some vehicle. And when my children were old enough to go with him, he was so thrilled. But they weren't, they were terrified. My daughter Joanna, when he first rode with her, as he came by where we were in the stands, he looked at us and he went like that. She was hiding on the floor of the little vehicle. When we conceived of our museum, I very much wanted to represent the apartment there because it was such a part of their lives. It's the purpose of the museum, for people to know who he was and what he liked to do. And uh, this was something that was very dear to both of my parents. The window you see behind me here is an exact replica of the window he would stand and look out at the main square. And uh, he could watch the Disneyland parade at the end of the day. And he always got very emotional when he saw them lower the flag in his Disneyland. I love the fact that Disneyland has kept this apartment the way it is. That lamp is always lit in that window over the firehouse, sort of as a symbol that Dad's spirit is still present in Disneyland.